We're here with the director of The Survivor, Barry Levinson, and its star, Ben Foster. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Um, Barry, I want to start with you. Every story of a Holocaust survivor is a remarkable one, but there is something unique about Harry Haft's story. I wanted to ask you, how did you first encounter his story and why did you want to make it into a film? Well, um, here's, the, here's the, uh, the, the oddity of it all. When I was about um, five years old, you know, I grew up in Baltimore. I lived with my parents and my grandparents. And um, this was about nine in the late 40s. And a, a man showed up at the door. Uh, his name was Simka. And he came in and I quickly found out that it, he was my brother's, my, my grandmother's brother. And which I never knew she had a brother. I never heard it mentioned or whatever. And anyway, they would put him up in my bedroom on the other side of the room, uh, you know, because my grandparents, my parents, it's a crowded house. And we put him, he was put over on the other side of the room. And I'd wake up one night and he was tossing and turning and yelling out and carrying on in a language I never heard. And then I would, he would fall back asleep. And this went on night after night after night. And I never understood what was happening. And it was sort of frightening. And you could see how, that he was tormented by something. But, you know, I'm five years old. I'm not going to have this discussion. I don't know. And, you know, he, within two weeks or so, he had moved off on his own and went to Vineland, New Jersey. And there was never any talk about him. And when I was 16 years old and I'm sitting with my mother and we're talking, she says, well, you know, Simka, when he was in a concentration camp and suddenly I went, he was in a concentration camp. And then uh, it occurred to me, then that's what he was doing at night. He was that he was reliving those moments, those nightmares, etc. And so when I got this script and I, I immediately responded to it because it's not just the story of a man, you know, surviving the camps. It's a man dealing with his past that haunts him constantly. And even as he goes through life, it is there, and now we, we call it post-traumatic stress disorder, something that you wouldn't think of. It's not like, okay, you're out of the camps, and now you're free, and you get on with your life. Many, many people, whether it's in war or what have you, traumatic experiences don't just disappear the moment the event is over. And so that's what drew me into the process. Um, ben, taking on this role has got to demand a lot of any actor. You know, you've done very intense, uh, dramatic work, emotional work in uh, films before and Leave No Trace or Hell or, High Wa Hell or High Water or The Messenger, many of, of your films. But I wanted to ask you about the particular transformations that are qu required to play Harry Half, the physical transformation, of course, but also the emotional or the psychic transformation that's necessary to put yourself into his skin. Well, it it follows three decades, isn't that right, Barry? I believe it's three decades. Uh, and uh, we had to chart that that physical past. Uh, and uh, being in the camps, Harry, Harry had dropped an enormous amount of weight. And then uh, we jumped forward in time to be able to be a, 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 a light uh, heavyweight when he's, when he's boxing. And, and, and boxing Marciano, and then furthering that uh, post career. So, charting that physical path was one element that we we took a lot of. Uh, we had to strategize collectively. Um, it was it was suggested to me early on when when Barry called. I mean, when Barry calls, I mean, you know, you, you, you read it the day you, you you receive it. You know, he he called up and said, "Hey, I got this thing. Maybe, maybe you'll take a look at it." Very end of the table read it right then and uh, the opportunity to reunite with him was you know a thrill and then you have to get down to logistics so the logistics were the weight transformation as, as a basic and it was it was suggested to me by the producer saying hey you know we have this great technology where we're living in this amazing technology a world of digital technology where we can make you bigger we can make you smaller and I knew for myself, I needed to drop the weight. Hmm. I, I, I needed it. To, Why is that? 
I, you know, most people don't get to choose to go hungry. So having the choice felt like the luxury I wanted. I needed that hunger to inform the rest of Harry's journey throughout the film. That kind of uh, drop is not something that you shake. It, it's, it's part of the trauma Barry was talking about. I needed to see how far I could go and still be able to fight. Uh, so we took about uh, five months uh, in prep, which is a luxury. Usually you get about six weeks, at least as an actor, you know, six weeks, find the guy. But this was a, an enormous opportunity to, to, um, to educate myself and lose and drop and learn to fight in that, for that era. And then we took five weeks off to, to put it back on. So dropped 62 pounds for the, for the camps, which was Harry's recorded weight at the time. Um, and then put on another 50 to match his weight for the ring. It, it's, it's something that's in the body. The body doesn't lie. And, and I, uh, it's not an effect. It's something I needed spiritually. Mm -hmm. And Barry, could you talk a little bit about taking Ben through that transformation uh, in order to get that, that kind of, that authenticity that, that you're talking about, Ben? Um, especially interested in how you would work on set. You're working you know, certainly in the scenes in the camps and in, you know, really um, disturbing circumstances, even if it's make-believe. Uh, but then this is also a character who ever, all the way through, he's either in a traumatic experience or he's remembering it. And I just wonder how you direct an actor to keep him in that really kind of perilous state for weeks. Well, I mean, first and foremost, I'm, you know, Ben is a great character actor. I mean, he really like, uh, steps into a role and, and becomes the person. And uh, so when I was thinking about who can do this and, and Ben's name came up, he said, no, I think he can, this is an amazingly complicated character to deal with. And um, fortunately, you know, Ben responded to it. And then you just take these kind of baby steps, you know, and say, and now you win this, you're going to do the, but you know what I mean? You have to kind of like take those steps. There's a learning curve to, to doing a movie. It's a learning learning curve for the production, but between a director and an actor, there's a, sometimes they're just discussions about things in general, and then that they you start to absorb them for me and for an actor like you know Ben. And you take those those baby steps in the pre-production period and you talk about things. And sometimes the things you talk about, you actually start to say, well, maybe we need a scene about. Maybe we should add a little moment here. Maybe this, you know, well, we took a trip to Auschwitz and I think it was very, you're not just looking at the buildings, you just get a sense of what it must be like. And out of that, certain things, uh, I think, touched us in certain ways that we're able to kind of just get a little bit of that knitting for character and environment so that you can hopefully enhance the film that way. Um, Barry, I want to ask you about um, sort of the visual language of the film. You're dealing with two particular areas uh, that have a very strong visual vocabulary. Uh, the, there have been a number of movies made about uh, Nazi uh, concentration camps and many movies made about boxing, and we've come to expect a certain kind of vocabulary. And for me, in some cases, the film is very aware of that vocabulary. And in other cases, it's kind of subverting or going in a different direction. I wondered what kind of choices you were making about how those scenes would look to your audience. Well, that, that's a hard question to answer. Um, it, it seemed clear that the film needed to be in the, when it's in the past, in the camp world, that somehow it needed to be in a in a black and white because you're thinking back and you say, well, maybe that just gives us a little bit of a visual palette that that time is separate. That's the nightmare that haunts them. And then of course, in the uh, in the stuff that takes place in the late forties and early fifties that has a certain kind of uh, color palette. And then the sixties has 
again, another type of, uh, you know, color palette towards, towards the latter part of the film. And you're just trying to find ways to guide and help the audience as you're wandering in and out of these times because you're not going, okay, now we're going to go back here. He's having these, the, these images and moments that are haunting him. And uh, uh, you're just building on that. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, one of the other elements that I found very moving in the film, Ben, was the romance between uh, Harry and the character played by Vicky Creeps. Um, and these are two characters who are both traumatized uh, by the experience of the Holocaust and yet drawn towards each other. But that experience of the Holocaust obviously makes it so much more difficult to, to connect with another human being. I wonder if you could talk about how you and Vicky and, and working with the script and with Barry, how you actually created the, the dynamics of that relationship. It's a very kind of particular romance in the film. It is. A, a, you know, a, when, when Phantom Thread came out, which, which introduced many of us to, to Vicky's work, I, I think I saw it three times. Beautiful film. Uh, gorgeous film and, and when Barry said do you know this actress and of course she's luminous uh, so thrilled that the that, that Barry was uh, surrounding make creating this world of, of people who vibrate these amazing faces and and, and talents and, and wasn't going for wasn't going for the shtick we were going for for the heart and um, so when Vicky showed up, she just has a light, and uh, and you feel it. And 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 there are some people that you look at, and you really have to work hard at making something feel. And with her, you just you just what did Cagney say? Plant your plant your feet and tell the truth. Hmm. <laughs> that's what he said about acting. Yeah, yeah. that's that's. Perfect, really. Um, Barry, when I was watching The Survivor, I couldn't help but think of you know, the incredibly rich filmography that you have and, and maybe what is a thread of um, taking us into the fault lines of American masculinity, whether it's Diner or Bugsy or Rain Man or so many other films. And here again, this is a man who becomes an American. He doesn't start out that way. But uh, once again, you're showing us the complexities of this particular man. And I wonder where you think the survivor sits alongside your other films and if you see any kind of continuity. Um, I, it's a good question because I don't know. You know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I, I never kind of looked back to try to figure out what movies I was making and why I was making them. And this one was pretty clear, as I told you earlier. But there are certain, I'm, I basically get interested in characters and the kind of world they're in. And, uh, and, and, I, and, and to find that kind of uh, complexity of a character and to explore it in a way. I mean, let me, can I give an example? Because Ben mentioned, you know, Vicky and how, she, how terrific she is. There's a very big uh, pivotal scene towards the, very, towards the latter part of the film. And uh, this is when Harry reveals certain things to his wife. And uh, the scene ends where he does that and she gets up and she walks over and she hugs him. And that's the way the scene ended. And I said to Vicky before just as we're literally ready to shoot, I said, Vicki, uh, when he finishes telling this horrific tale, what happens if you don't get up from the table and go over and hug him? What happens if you don't basically have that kind of, you know, hug one another moment? What happens? And, and this is where I think two actors uh, were able to really connect in ways. And so she didn't get up. And then she said something, and then that, that, that got, you know, uh, Harry, you know, been playing him, uh, agitated, and it built. And the two of them just went off on one another, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing sequence. But that's because I can throw out a suggestion, and because they're so good, and they so connect with one another, that it, it, it became beyond, 
you know, uh, the page. That's not to ignore the screenplay. It's just sometimes you say, you know, they're, they're really working here. Let's see what else can happen. You know, we can always go back to the, you know, the regular thing. But what would happen? And it was an, ex an explosion of a moment when, when we finished it. And I was just like, whoa, that was interesting. That's really effective. So they're, you're, you're always fighting when you're doing certain pieces is to find, find the, uh, the characters where they're, they struggle with one another and you sense it. And, you, and that brings the drama, in, in my mind, at least to a more uh, uh, kind of, to me, a more honest emotional moment. And, and I think both of them were up to that. And that's what's so great when you can just hear what, looking at the modern, you see these two characters are so connected to one another that it, that it becomes a, a, a really defining moment in the film. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the fun of it. And you never know, because there is always an exploration as you go through certain movies, when you're dealing with human behavior, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, plot mechanics of certain movies, it's a different story. But here we've got to explore the humanity of these characters and the collision of, and the conflicts to, uh, to play this out. Mm -hmm. Ben, what do you remember about that scene and, and that moment where Barry gave that direction to you both? It's classic Barry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's not dictatorial. It's uh, comes over quietly, kind of feeling the scene like a jazz conductor. It's like, what about a little little bit more? See what happens. Mm -hmm. And and he has a way of transmitting potential, which frees us up. It's not hit that note every time the way we need it. Although at some points the rhythm, because Barry's, he, he, he's got, it's almost, it's almost supernatural. His, his sense for the idiosyncratic rhythms of human behavior and language. He'll drop a word or twist a word, like play with that. In this particular moment that, that, that uh, we're referring to, which is when Harry tells his, his uh, his nightmare, uh, or rather his, his the thing he regrets most. The scene really was just, I think, as as written. He just has a, a moment saying, "You don't know the worst part of me," and he's just supposed to lean up against the sink, and she's going to come over. As Barry was saying, to to embrace Harry and make it all better. And Barry was not satisfied with this movie moment. He wanted he wanted to see what would happen, and and um, I don't know what he said to Vicky, but she started asking me questions, and rather than rather than comfort me, she started antagonizing Harry, and that caused uh, uh, me to recall because we shot in order what happened in that ring. That's not written, but it's the events that happened. So I started, or Harry, however you want to put it. Uh, the story is then told. And um, she wasn't making it safe for me. And there was, I guess it resulted in um, getting very upset. And there was some orange juice in a picture that ended up all over the set. <laughs> Which I felt bad about when they killed Cut, because you know it's like you gotta clean it up. But it's what happened, and 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 uh, getting to to dance with Vicky in those in those in those waters, and and Barry uh, creating an environment where, where where that's not only supported but it's encouraged. Uh, something happened, and something was exchanged, and I'm glad the cameras were rolling that day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The last thing I want to add is um, just about the the environment that the survivor will be released into. Um, it's been many decades now since the Second World War. There's now more contention over 
um, facts, weirdly enough, the fact of the Holocaust, there's a rise in anti-Semitism. Um, what are your hopes for what the film can accomplish in terms of when it's released and, and how it makes people reflect on that history? Are you asking Ben I'll me? Yeah, both of you, but I'll start with you. I, I think that, um, you know, I, the key to me is this. Uh, what happens to, to people who are, in a sense, casualties of war or other traumatic experiences? So, yes, this is focused on uh, this man who was Jewish that came from the camps, right? But, but the journey that he has to go on to find peace as, as a... Uh, as anyone who's faced that in a way, you know, we sometimes we see people and we don't know what's wrong with them or whatever, and we don't investigate it or et cetera. I, mean, I, I sometimes, you know, see like here in LA and you're seeing all of these kind of tents outside of the VA hospital, you know, and it goes on for like blocks and blocks. And those people, like many of them, not only are they, uh, you know, basically, not earning a living, living, but they but they struggle in in many ways, uh, and the, many of us in in, the, in this country and in the world struggle with those things. It, it's not just simply the event; it's how do you overcome that event? And I so I think it's I think it's a broader um, uh, band than simply it's the Holocaust story. It's beyond that. I mean, how does he deal with a wife? How does he deal with, you know, children? How do you deal with moments when suddenly you're haunted by these things and you're trying to have, you know, dinner with your wife or your kids or you're doing it and it just keeps coming back and reliving it? One of the, his manager is the first in the film who who's, uh, senses that in, uh, in, in Harry when he talks about his brother in World War I and how he basically never could get over that. Uh, and the horrors that he faced and ultimately killed himself. He was talking about World War I. And so he's the one that spots it in, in Harry when many people then didn't. You know, it's like, okay, well, that's the past. You know, God knows what um, we, we live with and we're not all the same. We don't all respond the same to some kind of horrific event. Some people can get over it and that's the end of it. And a lot of people are haunted by that. And so I think that's, that's what drew me into the piece, as I've said earlier. Uh, but I, I think that's what makes it the, that I really kind of uh, was driven by. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, uh, I, I thought that's a valid story because it's, uh, it's bigger than one man's issue or, or what happened during World War II because it happened and continues to happen, you know, to this day to many, many people. In many cases, those, their problems are ignored. Mm -hmm. And Ben, what, what are you hoping that people who see the survivor take away from it in the particular moment it's being released into? To, to, to follow what, what, what Barry is talking about, the baseline is, is, uh, is empathy. We don't know what anybody's gone through. We, 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 we cannot... We cannot imagine what other people have been through, but we, we can practice empathy. At its heart, though this film deals with, with the Holocaust, uh, there, are, there are people who are trying to get out of an airport today in Afghanistan. There is a concentration camp in the United States of America that the Nazis took great interest in in the 1800s. This is not a new issue. It's baseline human empathy. And it keeps repeating itself. And if we whitewash and ignore history, it's going to keep happening. So I hope this film is a signal rather than a, uh, a time capsule. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you both for speaking today about The Survivor. Ben Foster, the star of the film, and Barry Levinson, its director. And thank you for bringing the film to the Toronto Film Festival. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much for having us.